Is Harry Kane fit for the final? We're not sure yet. Um, he didn't train with the team today, but we'll have more of an idea tomorrow to see if we can get him back on the pitch. How would you rate his chances as of today, sort of percentage-wise? I'm not really sure. It's just it's, it's, it's a case of taking it hour by hour now. So the days are obviously running out. So it's a case of seeing how he feels in the next four hours, the next six hours, and then go from there. But I can't really answer that question until tomorrow. So everyone isn't sure. Harry has been unlucky. He went into the Champions League final following an injury. And again, this time, what's your thought process for a decision like this? I think it was completely different because Harry had a very long time out injured for the Champions League final. Um, like I said, I don't know if Harry's going to be available for training tomorrow, let alone the game on Sunday. So, um, But if he is, then it's a quick turnaround. A week without training is not, a, is not a problem for someone in Harry's condition. But I think we're going to have to probably assess it later tonight, early on in the morning, and see if we can get him on the pitch. On the cup final itself, what does it mean as an Enfield-born lad to, to be leading Tottenham out at a Wembley Cup final? Yeah, it means a hell of a lot. Um, obviously, I've, obviously, I've not really thought about it a great deal in that sense because I've actually been preparing for the game. But I've said all along, this this isn't so much about me. This is about the football club. Um, it's about Tottenham Hotspur being involved in these big matches, our fans getting to see us in these big matches and... My, my mind, my focus is fully on the match and maybe maybe one day once the season's done and I can rest and, and get some time to think, then I'll look back on it and, and be very proud. Yeah, what shape is the squad in then going into a game like this against, I suppose, the champions-elect in, in Manchester City? And, and how much of a boost did it give everybody to get the win during the week before this game? Yeah, there's no doubt in Wednesday night was massive. Um, just for the whole energy around the club, the players, the feeling. It's important you go into a massive game like we have on Sunday, feeling good. Um, and I think the manner in which we won the match Wednesday night, listen, it, it was a good feeling. The, the lads felt confident, they felt comfortable. And hopefully that momentum can build into the weekend. Have you had any dealings with conversations, perhaps with Pep Guardiola in the past? And what have you made of, of his teams over the years? No, I've had no dealings at all. Um, just like any other football man that watches his teams. Um, listen, he's a great manager. He's, he's one of the best in the world. There's no doubt in that. He's been at City for, for a while now. So he's, 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 he's got that as well. They've got a lot of familiar faces within their setup. They know how they play. But listen, we're, we're Tottenham and, and I'm sure they'll be thinking of us as well. And Gareth Bale, um, from your perspective, came straight back in. He, he scored a great goal against uh, Southampton. What's the key to, to getting the best out of him? Well, listen, we've got so many players in, in those attacking positions that give us different options. Um, the other night, Harry wasn't available and we just felt that we needed someone else in the final third that could produce moments of brilliance. And Gareth done that. Uh, I don't think... Anyone has ever doubted um, his ability. He's proven that over such a long career now that his quality is always there. And in those those big moments, those key moments within games, he he always produces. And just a final one away from this. Uh, Patrick Bamford said earlier in the week, it, it's a shame racism doesn't create the same uproar as, the, as all of the Super League fallout did this week. I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Listen, I think the Super League, there's, there's a line drawn under that now, in my opinion. Um, the racism is, I think it's clear. It's clear within football. It's clear within society that much more needs to be done. Um, more is being done, but there's still a long way to go. And here at Tottenham, I know everyone here is, is trying to combat that. Thanks, Ryan. Paul. Good luck. Thank you. Just, Paul, we're going to go to George Cummings now. George, just Thanks, unmute Simon. you. George. Hello, Ryan. Ryan, um, there's a lot on the line at stake for you, isn't it? You could personally out-tactic Guardiola. Have you thought about that yourself, one of the best managers in Europe, and you could bring some, bring some surprises for him? No, this, um, it's, this is about Tottenham. Uh, this is about the football club. This is about the group of players, our fans, everyone. Uh, this isn't about me, 
my ego of me going up against Pep. This is Tottenham Hotspur against Manchester City. It's a game of football. I'm sure we'll be doing all we can to get the better of them. And, and likewise, they'll be doing the same for us. But it's a cup final. We've seen over the years, one-off games, anything can happen. Um, we'll go there believing uh, with confidence. So hopefully it'll go our way Sunday. This team, and you've been part of this team as a player as well, they should have won a trophy, shouldn't they? Considering how good they've been and the chances, is there a chance to make up for it? Yeah, I think I think there was a, probably a two or three year period where Tottenham had chances. They sh maybe should have, but football doesn't always work out like that. Um, what they did do, they developed a great team and the club went in a direction that we wanted and everyone within the club wanted that's that's how Tottenham should should go about things and listen unfortunately we didn't get over the line but if we don't get over the line Sunday then we still have our identity and our DNA as a football club and and that's the most important thing. With regards to Harry is there a potential here that I know you're Tottenham manager at the moment but England fans care about him as well if he plays could he be potentially risking his future for England at the Euros? Uh, listen, Harry is, Harry is a top professional. Um, we're taking it hour by hour. We're seeing how he feels. What, what we're not going to do and what Harry isn't going to do is, is put his body on the line if he don't feel like it's, it's suitable. Um, we're never going to put Harry in that position. Absolutely not. But we'll see what happens. We'll see how he is tomorrow. And then, then we can start making a decision from there. And you'll make that decision, will you? You'll make that one. No, no, it's a combined effort. It's, it's the player. How, how does the player feel? What do the medics say? What's the advice? What's, what's like you say, the chances of something happening? But Harry's, Harry's a mature man. He's a mature professional footballer. He's, he's, he's had to deal with certain situations. And I think ultimately we'll speak to him with no pressure. How do you feel? What are you feeling? And then we'll go from there. Thank you. Good luck. Cheers, George. OK, we're going to go to where's James. James at TalkSport, just unmuting you. Hi, Ryan. Ryan. Hello, James. What, Ryan, what memories do you have from the League Cup win in 2008? Because you were a teenager then and you were still yet to make your Spurs debut. Yeah, I remember. Obviously, the club sorted out tickets because every, every player at the club got a couple of tickets each. I remember going, I remember the game, I remember how it went, um, going behind, the, the manner in which the group won the game. But I think the biggest thing that stuck out for me was, was seeing Ledley lift the cup with, with Kino. Um, he was an academy lad. he came come through the system. And for us players, us academy players, to be able to see that, it was just like, it was such an inspirational moment for everyone within the club um, to see that someone from the academy go and lift the trophy. It was just, yeah, it was magical. It was a, it was a feeling that I'm sure inspired a lot of kids involved with the football club at that time. For you personally, you've achieved so much on and off the pitch in your career. What would it mean to you to be able to lift the League Cup as manager of Tottenham? Yeah, it would, it would mean a lot. It would mean a lot for all of the players as well because they've had to deal with some difficult moments. Um, I think most importantly, the fans, the feeling that the fans would get and what that would do for the football club as a whole. Um, Listen, these are the sort of games that we want to be involved in. These are the sort of games that Tottenham should be involved in. And thankfully, we are at the weekend and hopefully we can go there and get a positive result. And how much of an underdog do you think Spurs are when you consider what Man City have already achieved this season and what they could still achieve in a number of competitions? Yeah, listen, the Premier League and the Carlin, uh, the Carabao Cup is a, is, a, is a completely different competition. In the Premier League, yeah, they're probably going to win it. Like you said, they've got latter stages of the Champions League as well. But form goes out the window in cup finals. We, we've seen that it's, it's a game. It's, it's, it's one game. It's a one-off game on the day. Yes, they're a great side with great players. But let's not forget, we're a great side with great players too. So I'm sure they know that. We know that with them. But listen, we'll go there full of confidence. Absolutely. And finally, for me, Brian, how are you finding the process? I know it's early days, but the process of growing into the role. And in particular, how are you going about changing the relationship with a number of the players who are friends into players that you need to manage? I think it's, it's, it's been quite natural, to be honest. I've, 
I've been acting this way for a long time since I retired from football. When you start going down the coaching route, you, you start thinking about the game in a different way. You start speaking to people in a different way. I think luckily for me, I know every single person in this training ground, every single person within the club. I know everyone. I've got relationships. I've built friendships with everyone. So it's been natural. The players are professionals. They're top professionals. Um, yes, they're friends and they'll carry on being friends for sure. Um, but at the moment, we're all trying to pull in the same direction and that's to get Tottenham in a positive state and get Tottenham connected with the fans and, and feeling good again. So that's, that's my most important thing in my mind at the moment. OK, thanks, James. We're going to go to Chris Slag at BBC London. Chris. Hey, Ryan. Um, it felt a bit in the 2015 final and the 2019 Champions League final that the occasion passed the team by a bit, that for whatever reason they couldn't quite give their best. Do you sense a determination this time round that that's not going to happen again? Um, you know, if, I, if I think back to the, the 15 one, I, I played in it. I, I, I played, I started. We had moments in that game. I think Christian hit the crossbar at nil-nil. We were dangerous. Listen, they scored from a set play before half time. And they scored from a deflected cross as well. So there were massive amounts in it. It's cup finals. It's, 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 it's those moments. And I think back to the Champions League, all the preparation Maurizio and his team done. Within a couple of minutes, a penalty in that manner happens and you're one nil down and the momentum, the feeling completely changes. So I think when, when you're talking about games and things passing people by, I think, it depends how the game plans out, what, what happens, what key moments, and then when do they happen as well. So the most important thing for us is preparing the group, preparing the players for, for moments in games and, and how we, we stay calm and, and keep to our principles and have a game plan. I mean, it's been an incredible week in football. We have seen some protests from fans. Do you think that winning this trophy could play a really important role in unifying the supporters and, and the owners and bringing the club back together? Yeah, I, I think the most important things in, in any football clubs are their fans. Um, I've had a great relationship with our fans as a player. I felt the support in this moment too. Of course, if we, if we get a positive result on Sunday, then naturally I think the fans will, will be happy. The feeling will be totally different. Um, but likewise, if we don't, then... It's our job as a group of players and, and staff to, to make sure that connection is there and they, they feel that connection with the fans and we finish the season strong and going into next year as well, the, the identity of this football club has the fans on board because I felt it as a player, I know what it feels like and it's the most important thing. And just lastly, they say you've got to learn fast as a football manager. What, what's been your key learning in these, these opening two or three days? It's difficult because it's such a short, that's such a short space of time. Um, I touched upon it a minute ago. I'm lucky because I've, I've built relationships already. Even the players that I didn't play with, I've been able to build relationships with them in the last, last year, 18 months. So I have that. I have the trust of players. I have the respect of players um, for many different reasons. But I think it's just trying to get messages across as clear as possible. Um, not too many messages, but some messages and, and how you translate that. And that's probably been the biggest challenge in, in the last 48 to, to 72 hours. All right, thanks, Chris. We'll go to Jerry Cox. Hi, Ryan, how are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking forward to this. Um, Hugo Lloris was uh, very complimentary about you and he said, you know, don't underestimate Ryan. He's got a clear idea of how he wants to play and so on. Can you sum up your footballing philosophy? No, not at the moment. I mean, I've, I've been on my pro license. You get asked that and listen, you could have 50, 60, 70, 80 slides of this is my idea and this is, I think that's difficult. I think the most important thing for me is to have an idea, to have a structure, the players to have an idea and know what's expected of them. And then also within that, to give the players the freedom to, to act instinctively and what they feel on the pitch. Um, that's probably... If I'm trying to cut it short, that's that's probably it in two sentences. And, and Gareth said the other night at half time, you know, you told the players to have belief and and to get on the front foot a bit more. Do you think that's a, a difference that 
from the Spurs that we've seen in the last few months that there was a bit more of an attacking intent second half. Listen, what's happened before this week has, has gone in my eyes. Um, the most important thing at half time was giving them belief. And when you're not winning games of football, it's, sometimes that belief can go. Um, but the most important thing, I'm very, very proud of the boys because they had that. They, they believed, they stuck to it. Even the way the game went with the VAR decision, the disallowed goal. But to keep believing and to keep going off the back of not much positive results or performances. It, it says a lot about the group. It says a lot about the players, the characters, the personality of them. And um, that was the most pleasing thing for me. And just finally, how important will it be? How, how proud will you be to have fans there at Wembley, so to have Tottenham's fans be able to watch the cup final? Oh, massively. It's, it's obviously a, a massive shame that it's not full, uh, that, that we can't have tens of thousands more. But... Some fans, it's better than no fans. And like I said, I think the most important thing is the feeling around the club, the feeling that you get from the fans, even though they won't be there. I think we feel their energy um, and hopefully we can, we can create that feeling within the football club that's, that's a positive one and there's a connection between the players, the fans and everyone involved with Tottenham Hotspur. OK, thank you, Jerry. I've got hands up from Jonathan Ville, Alistair Gold and Kieran Bradley and that will be it for the broadcast after that. Jonathan, I'm coming to you first. Thanks, Tom. Oh, hi, Ryan. Um, Deli Ali's not played a lot of football recently. Can you just sort of tell, him, tell us where he is fitness-wise, but also what he needs to do to get back to being the player that you will have seen sort of like four or five, six years ago? Right, in terms of fitness-wise, he's, he's fine. The group, the group are absolutely fine. I think we see that the other day. I think if the group weren't fit, then we wouldn't have been able to keep going at the end and and keep being on the front foot and keep believing. If, if they had any doubts mentally, then surely that's absolutely gone now because to score late on says that not only physically you're fit, but mentally you're ready to compete for 90, 96 minutes as well. And in terms of Gareth as the individual, I think he's shown this year that Gareth in the final third is, is still Gareth of five, six years ago. You don't lose that instinct. You don't lose that that ability to arrive in the key moment and and the, the the selection of the certain finish. I mean, the finish the other night was was absolutely world class, and he keeps proving that if you're given those opportunities, then he's a player that we want in that area. You actually mean Deli Ali. Um, so if you could sort of say what he he sort of like needs to do to get back to being being to his best. But I think I think the group. So we've got. I've got 20, 20, 22 to 23 players as a whole, injured, not injured, fit. Everyone, everyone has a key part to play in the next six games. Um, most important thing that everyone's working hard in training, everyone's giving their all. So when called upon, if called upon, then they're ready to compete and ready to fight for the team. And I have to say that, that the attitude of the guys and the application in the last this last four or five days has been absolutely top. It's been top from everyone. So with that, it gives decisions to make and, and who, who, who gives me the feeling of, of who should play. And, but that's the decision that I'll make and us as coaches will make. But the most important thing is that the players are ready. They're competing. The attitude is right in the application. So that's all I can ask for. It's obviously been a whirlwind week for you this week. You wouldn't have started this week thinking you'd be leading the team out in the Carabao Cup final. How on earth do you sort of prepare tactically, analysis-wise, for a game against, you know, one of the best teams in Europe? Yeah, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. There's, there's a lot of hours in the day, believe it or not, especially when you're not sleeping. So there's time to prepare. Um, there's, there's definitely time. It's just getting that message across to the players, um, giving them the ideas, the, the solutions to certain situations. And... We'll see on Sunday. We didn't have much time on Wednesday. We had a positive result. And likewise, we haven't got much time this week. But listen, the players are listening. The players are fully engaged. So hopefully we'll go there full of confidence and get a positive result. Thank you. Thanks, John. Ali Gold. Hi there, Ryan. Um, just want to pick on that. You mentioned they're not sleeping. I mean, how many hours are you putting in a day right now to try and make everything happen so quickly? Yeah, a lot, a lot. I'll be honest, a lot. But 
that's natural. That's normal. I think you speak to any head coach in, in this situation, especially when you've got two games this week, um, I probably 48 hours to prepare for the first one and an extra couple of days this time. But that's normal. I'm sure that's normal. I'm sure the people, the, the managers that have longevity in the game find a way to, to manage their time and focus their energy on certain things. But the most important thing, like I've said, is getting those messages across to the players, um, giving them the belief that how we want to play and how we want to approach the game is right, is right for the group of players. And that's been the most important thing. I just want to touch quickly on Gareth Bale there. I mean, obviously, fantastic goal on Wednesday night. The last time we kind of see him, he went on a little bit of a run, of a purple patch of form, uh, which was uh, terrific. I mean, could this be the start of another one of those? And does it prove that even someone that's in their 30s, it's still about belief and confidence at the end of the day? Yeah, I, th I think any player, regardless of who you are, of what you've, what you've achieved in the game, you need to play one with confidence and then... And also that, that freedom of, of being able to act instinctively. And what we see from Gareth the other night was, was something that we've seen for many years. We've seen it this season as well, that if Gareth's in the final third and he gets moments, he gets opportunities, then you back him to take them. Um, also, what we have is competition. We have, we have people pushing. We have people who believe and are confident themselves. So... There's, there's some decisions to make. There's some tough decisions to make. And I think the game plan, the idea of, of how we want to approach it would probably dictate who plays and what condition players are in. But Gareth's, Gareth's a world-class player. He still is, regardless of his age, regardless of, of, of many different things. He hasn't lost and he won't lose that ability to find the back of the net. And with the clean slate, obviously, you bring for a lot of these players who might not have got the minutes uh, before you. Do you notice that kind of extra zip from certain players? Is, is, does it give them a, re a renewed kind of lease of life for the rest of the season? Yeah, I would hope so. I'd hope so. Like I say, everyone's been excellent in training in the last few days. The, the attitude and the happiness of, of the players that didn't play on Wednesday night was top as well. And that's, that's so important when, when you've got a squad of top players like a lot a lot of top players it can be sometimes very difficult to manage that um but the group are together the players are together and like I've said to all of them um it's a case of who's who's doing well who, who gives me that feeling if if you're ready and, and you're training hard then there's a decision to be made um there's no one written off and it's just about giving the players as much confidence and belief as possible that if you're called upon then you're called upon because we trust you Okay, thanks, Ali. Kieran Bradley to finish. Kieran. Hi, Ryan. Um, it's obviously been a fairly whirlwind few days, as people have been uh, uh, saying to you there, and you've been at pains to say that it's not about you and obviously about the players. I just wonder if uh, any uh, messages have come in from around the football world, maybe uh, to give you a few you know, tips, advice, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe give us a bit of a, a steer on that. Oh, look, my phone, my phone's been going off crazy. I've not, there's probably a lot of people out there that think I'm ignoring them, but honestly, I'm not. I've just not had the time to, to respond to three or 400 messages. Um, I've got people that I trust. I trust their opinion. I've got people that I value their opinion um, in the football world that I've spoken to. I've been in conversation with. And listen, people have been through things that I haven't. And I think if you can lean on people that, that have had that, that experience and that's very helpful. Good stuff. Um, I'm, I'm over here in Ireland and we're uh, very interested in the development of Troy Parra. Uh, obviously, I realise he's not at the club at the moment, but you'll be very familiar with Troy from the underage setup. Um, I just wonder if you could give us an impression of what you uh, expect to be his ceiling, if you like, and maybe areas that he might be able to improve to really make it to the very top. Uh, listen, Troy has, Troy's gone out on loan this season. Um, He's been exposed to something he's never been exposed to. Um, the club obviously believe in him. We believe in him. He's had some difficult moments, but that's absolutely normal. That's normal. My, my mind and my energy is probably more on the group of players that I'm preparing for, for Sunday and the, the remaining Premier League games of the season. I know Troy, I have a personal relationship with him, of course, but I'll be absolutely honest, my, my mind and my thinking is, is on a different group of players at the moment. Um, 
And I think that's normal.